Hello, in this presentation I'd like to discuss why most websites are actually failing. Whenever I attend a business meeting group I always ask the question, who thinks their website is working well for them? and bringing in new sales or leads regularly. Unfortunately, I rarely ever see the face of satisfied website owners. Most will tell you what a great website they have, how they're so happy with it, with the design and the images, and it looks so professional. Far too often, though, this is bluff, because truly they are disappointed with their website. Because if their website was truly performing, They'll be talking about the hundreds of visitors they see and the orders it produces. Instead, they just want to show with their new logo. The main measure of success, sales, is missing. In most cases, their website is just a very expensive electronic brochure. Do you have Google Analytics installed on your website? If not, then you may want to pause this video and check out our 10 minute guide to setting up Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a statistics package which allows you to see who's visiting your site and where they go. If you already have Google Analytics installed then you probably know what bounce rate is. A bounce is where a visitor lands on a page and then leaves the website without visiting anymore. They bounce off. These are the statistics of a website and you can see that the headline figures which are taken from Google Analytics show that there are 839 sessions and produced from 818 users during the period tested. And during that time those sessions are producing 1101 page views. So that's an average of 1.31 pages per session. So most people are only visiting one page. And if you see the average session duration, they're only spending 30 seconds on the website. And with 1.31 pages per session, you're expecting the bounce rate to be high, and it is 87%. So 80%, 87% of people visiting this website view just one web page and go. And all the people in total are still averaging just 30 seconds per visit. And then we have a look at the new sessions. The new sessions tells us that 96% of people that visit this website are doing so for the first time. That means less than 4% return. This website is not producing. Why do so few people come back to the site? Why do so few people read more than one page? Wherever the visitors are coming from, they're obviously not coming for the right reasons, because they don't stay. Now it is possible to have a one-page website if you've got a really good order page. But if even if you have a very really good order page, it would certainly take more than 30 seconds to convince somebody to make a purchase. So in this case, a one-page web experience is a failure. Here's another website, and immediately you can see that firstly there are a lot more people visiting the site. That's a good start. 14,000 sessions for 7,800 users. And they are producing 114,000 page views. That's nearly eight pages per session average. So people really are sitting on the site and moving around to pages. They're spending an average of 2 minutes 28 seconds, which is a good duration. That's a good figure, although maybe for the number of pages that would be seen as slightly low. Obviously some of the pages have not got a lot of information that people are reading. But it must be of interest, otherwise they wouldn't carry on and cover an average of nearly 8 pages. Now the bounce rate is 22%, so that means 1 in 5 people decide that they don't want to be on the website and go off somewhere else. 
Now, I would probably like to look at what pages are producing that bounce and seeing if we could improve on that, because that still seems quite a few people that decide they don't like being around. And 43% of the people are new sessions. Again, that might be a little bit high. I like to have a figure of between 30 and 40%, but it really depends on the website and how many times you expect people to visit before they make a purchase. And it also depends how long it takes between the times that people visit the website. Because there's a lot of web um, security tools that are going to be on your computer and they tend to hide the identity of people. So Google finds it difficult the longer the time period between two visits. Google finds it more difficult to have kept the data to recognize the person visiting and returning a second time. So the longer the duration, the more difficult it is for Google to tell the difference. But yes, I'd like to improve the new sessions rate. So 56% of people are returning visitors. I would like to get that to perhaps 70 or 80%. Then I know people are coming back on a regular basis. But nevertheless, these are good stats. And it's no surprise to you if I tell you that this site produces good business and good sales for its owner. You see, websites must engage in a process just like any other sales tool must engage in a process. First of all, they need to meet the customer, so the people need to get to the website. Now, how they get to the website is out of the scope of this particular presentation, but certainly we need to discuss the actual meeting, and what I mean by that is they need to make a good impression. So when you land on the website, it needs to make a good impression. It needs to be a professional website and it needs to be seen to be producing good quality. The next thing people need to know is to know you. And the only reason they can know you through a website is because you've put information there about you. So the About Us page is very important, very key page. It may be one About Us page, it may be a group of About pages. Who you are, where you come from, what your story is, whether you have views on particular issues like being green, being efficient. They need to know you so as customers they can align your beliefs and their beliefs. They need to trust you. Now the value of trust depends on the value of business. But the more value of business you expect from them, the more they need to trust you to spend that money. Now that doesn't mean things have to be perfect. In fact, there is an argument to say that you shouldn't be perfect. You can make the odd mistake as long as you're able to correct it easily and quickly. And if people trust you, they're going to return. And you need them to return so you can continue the sales process of engaging with them. Few people are going to purchase anything from one visit. So we want them back again and again until they're happy that they wish to make business with us. And then they can buy. Once they have decided, they buy. Now there are tricks we can do to influence them to buy sooner. But at the end of the day, I believe that websites should be a promotion tool and not a sales tool. So they engage with the customer and the customer will then decide when and what they wish to purchase. So what's the secret to improve websites and make them more powerful a sales tool? Well, any of the words on this slide could be seen as being important. But at the end of the day, what I'm talking about is adding regular content. You don't want people to turn up to your site, have a look around, and then drive off into the sunset. You need people to return. People who never return will never be customers. So we need to bring them back. And the only way we're going to bring them back is to have something for them to come back to. And that's why we need regular content. 
Now, regular content is an issue which I will raise again and again and again. And the usual answer I have from people is, I don't know what to put. What content do I have? We don't get many new products, so what am I going to write about? Well, if you're talking about writing about new products, you're probably in the wrong place anyhow. What I would say is think about your friends meeting you in the evening. And when they ask you how your day was, you're not going to tell them that you've just had a blue widget delivered, which has 5% more efficient whatever than something else. I'm sure if they're friends like mine, they really don't want to know about your new products. They don't really want to know anything like that. But what they would be interested in is stories, successes, funny things that happened. Things that make you more human. If somebody famous visited you, if a customer was desperate mess and how you were able to solve it. In short, they're interested in stories because we all like stories and good news stories from your day-to-day -day activities give facts about you, your products and the way you work. And therefore, they're great tools for selling. See, your website needs to be informative and engaging with prospective visitors. And then you are leading them along the path to making a purchase. Now, shops have a front window. And your website is a front window to your business. And just like a shop, you need it to be updated on a regular basis. Otherwise, people will stop looking in it and will just walk straight past. And that's why you need regular new content. If you take a more competitive environment like this uh, photo of Covent Garden, if you think of a more competitive environment like this street market here, this is Camden Market, and there are many stalls selling almost identical products down this market. So what are you going to do to make sure that yours stands out from the rest? More interesting content. And don't expect people to come and find you. You need to go and find them. And that means promoting through social media. But don't worry, you don't need to use all the social media. Just choose the ones that are most applicable to you and also the ones that allow your customers to see your content in a useful way. It's no good using YouTube if you can't produce video content. If you can produce one-liners and pictures, then Twitter's very useful. So is Instagram. Don't forget Facebook, though. Facebook, you can put almost any content in, and Facebook is very good when you come to targeting your customers using Facebook advertising. And there is the usual forgetting. And then, of course, we're all going to forget. Email marketing is still important because people still have email. So like it or loathe that you've got to use social media. And whether or not you have the accounts on all of these, think of where your customers are and what social media they use. And if you don't know, ask them. And then link that to your content. And again, this is why you need content. Because if you don't produce new content, you'll have nothing to tweet or link to Facebook pages about. There's nothing more frustrating than me seeing a great headline on Twitter. When I go to the page, I find it was written by some marketing company 18 months ago. So produce regular content. Tell people about it through regular updates. And make your website pay. Thank you very much. Don't forget to follow us, to like us, and to come and see our new content that we produce regularly as well. Thank you very much. For more info, visit wpbusinessclub.com. WP Business Club. We mean business.